What is up, everyone? Welcome to round three of the Portland Monthly Pre-Modern Paper Magic Afternoon September 2024 Tournament. A couple of rad decks to show you, so without further ado, let's take a look at the deck list. First up is David on what I am only going to describe, I guess, as a blue tinker mud list. Now, at time of recording audio, I don't have his full deck list in front of me. I did play against it in the tournament, and I have seen a photo of an earlier iteration, so while the updated photo might be appearing here, and probably is, uh, I can't quite comment on exact card quantities but i do know that it does play a good amount of soul lands in uh, ancient tombs and city of traders it does run the frexian devour combo with ultra davincha and frexian devour of course has tinkers i believe it has four tasabo's webs in the main some prison effects like winter orb and a tangle wire and a mishra's helix as well and i think even a jester's cap on the side which is uh, particularly spicy and i think was inspired by one of our players joe who brought those to a few pre-modern terminus that ended up being pretty relevant and i think is a underappreciated card as a whole overall though it seems like a very cool list and i'm excited to see how it plays next up we have mose returning to the camera with his five color gators if you haven't caught this deck before it is a mid-range deck with friction and gator that is a base green it is five colors though thanks to the birds of paradise City of Brass, Gemstone Mines, and Undiscovered Paradises as well, all of which helping hit those mini color pips in the deck, which does translate into a lot of threats. The Frexian Negators, of course, are the main ones and what the deck is named after. They are reinforced by Thornscape Apprentice being able to give the Negators first strike, but also being able to tap down opponent's creatures can be super relevant, even if there's not a big threat on the board. For Call the Herds, as well as just good overall value engines, it does run removal in bolts and swords and also has mana leaks fire and ice i guess technically does count as removal as well and can be super relevant also running for meddling mages two naturalizes and a rancor which i believe is new all in all this is a super rad list that has done very well throughout several tournaments actually so it's very cool to see it again in its current form so without further ado let's get into the games Okay, here we go. David is on the left. Mose is on the right. Now, this is a very prison-y control deck versus what is definitely going to be the beatdown in this matchup. And I'm not sure if Mose knows what David is playing on, which does give David the advantage in game one. Combo decks, of course, will always have the advantage game one without their opponent knowing exactly what is good to keep against them versus a regular hand. And David does have <laughs> a pretty good hand, I feel like, uh, if it had lands at least. Having a Tinker and at least one of the combo pieces, he actually had two Altered Dimensions. If there had been a blue source in there, potentially that would have been a keep. But it looks like Mose is going to be keeping a seven. I did see he had a negator, so some good early threat. And maybe a birds, I think. The deck does run a lot of mana dorks for that early acceleration. Uh, you want to get out not only multicolor threats, the birds definitely do help with that, but also just um, a big call of the herd or another impactful spell the deck does run pretty mana light though i think the land count is at least sub 20 might even be sub 18 you can go back and check the the deck tech i forgot to to count this time but really relying on the mana dorks to power through and yep looks like we are getting a birds on turn one, say go. There's an ancient tomb, take two for a mind stone and pass the turn. Both players ramping on turn one. It's almost like we're playing commander. <laughs> All right, there's a Findhorn Elves and a Thornscape Apprentice, pass. That Findhorn Elves being a prize card for the December tournament, I believe, last year, which it's kind of crazy to think about, but we're coming up on a year of pre-modern videos, so 
That's amazing. Thanks to all of you guys. All right, Tangle Wire coming down. Tapping all those creatures and lands, but both still getting one more land out. But yeah, crazy that we're almost at a year. Uh, November, I think, was the first month we actually started doing these pre-modern videos. So thank you to everyone who's been watching for that long. Thank you to everyone that's helped us grow the channel. You're all amazing. There's an altar of dementia, which is a little scary. <laughs> Next turn, if he has the tinker, this is game over. And Moe's can just pass. And tap two. And I don't think there was a tinker there. A little discussion happening here with the altar. And nope, looks like David's just gonna pass. Okay. Most still having to tap two here. A land in a Thornscape Apprentice makes the most sense. Now, he does have two naturalizes in the main. Alright, tap in a Fintor Elves to play out a Landwar Elves. Can't use that Fire Ice that he just drew either. But yeah, Moe's having two naturalizes in the main could prove difficult. This combo that David has is tough to interact with as long as the altar is out first. Alright, there's a Phyrexian processor. How much life are we paying? So this Phyrexian processor for four can make X uh, black minions, I believe. They're definitely black, which is important. <laughs> uh, and they're not artifacts, which is also important. But notably, he does have enough mana to make a minion. And is it... a 4-drop? How much life was paid? He took 2 off of the... tomb before. And then took another 2 to cast it. So that's 4. So are they... Th Three threes. All right, there's a fire ice, and we're gonna be icing here. Or sorry, uh, yeah, icing to draw a card. And David is paying seven life. All right. So the life. Uh, payment didn't happen beforehand, but there's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Let's sack that to make said 7-7. Seven, seven. <laughs> and that could prove to be a real problem for Moe's. Uh, the Thornscape Apprentice being able to tap it down. Is relevant. What does he have in hand? He does have a mana leak, which I think he wants to save for potentially a tinker. Although, David does have enough mana to pay the mana leak, so not so good in this situation. Now that Thornscape Apprentice can tap down the 7-7 seven, seven right now. All right, what are we trying to play here? Um. Is he looking at a Dreadnought? It sort of looks like it, but I'm not entirely sure. 
Or is he looking at a meddling mage? Alright, tapping away to tap that creature down. Nope, not doing that. <laughs> Bo's running through a lot of lines here. Alright, we're tapping three. There's the Phyrexian Negator. Now you may have noticed that his negators all have different uh, scribbles, I would say altars, on them. Those are done by his kid, actually, which is very cool. It's a really cool idea. I'm not sure how old his kid is, but uh, having them contribute to your Match of the Gathering deck is pretty frickin' rad. Oh, there's Sabo's web. It's not gonna do too much here. It is functionally a cantrip. Bose's deck, I don't think has a single land that is affected by Tizabo's web. All right, Ancient Tomb and Lotus Petal coming down. And Bose is gonna tap down the 7-7 seven, seven on end step, go to his turn. David is only on seven and can only make one creature this turn and can just, yep, Moses is just going to swing in for seven, make a creature, uh, tap it down, and that's going to be game number one. Okay, here we are on game number two. Bo's having the foresight for that alpha strike in the last turn. Tapping your opponent's creature when they can only make one more potentially is very smart. David getting maybe a little greedy with the life off of the uh, Phyrexian processor. I'm not sure why seven was the magic number. I'd be curious to know why. All right, we got an ancient tomb going into a sky diamond and pass. Notably the sky diamond makes white. Sorry, it makes blue. I always think it makes white. That's the, uh... God, what is the, uh... The Mirage Block one that makes white? Is it... It's not a Pearl Diamond. <laughs> uh, anyways. A Propaganda coming down. That is gonna make attacking a bit more difficult for a deck that can be a little mana-starved. Of course, though, Moses has brought in all of his artifact and a chamber removal. Have to think that there's all four naturalizes in the main now. Anyways, the art on Sky Diamond though is pretty fantastic. I think that's uh is that Jeff Mirkola? I'll look it up after the fact, but Really cool, really wish that came in foil. It is actually a shame that a lot of the Mirage art never made it to a foil printing because there is some real bangers. All right, we're tapping a forest here to bounce the layer, tap, or to bounce it for a layer, tap it, pass, play. Um, that's not a wretched aneurid, that's the other aneurid where you can discard two cards uh, to blink it. It's also a 3-4, I think, for three, which is above rate. Rush Hopper Aneurid, I think is what it's called. But I'll pull up the deck list real quick while we're waiting for David's turn. Alright, playing a Lotus Bell. He does have a Tinker. Wait, does he have the Altar too? Can he just win this turn? I think he can just win this turn. Right? Because... 
Yeah. <laughs> Alright, tap in the city. Tap in three to tinker. Go get the devourer. And yeah, that's that's game. And yep, Moe's just packing up. We're going to game number three. Okay, glad we got to see the combo from David's deck. For those of you that aren't super familiar with it, Frexion Devourer reads that you can exile cards from the top of your deck and have it get plus one plus one counters equal to their casting cost. If you got over a certain amount, I forget the exact number, it destroys itself. However, you can respond to its trigger with its own trigger and make it basically as large as you want and then sack it to the Alter Dementia, which mills target player equal to creature's power and, or toughness. I forget which one again. Exactly. It doesn't really matter. Basically what it means is uh, however many cards your opponent has in their deck, you can functionally mill them for, assuming you don't have like 10 cards in your deck. <laughs> and if you got to that point, opponent probably has that many cards as well. Anyways, we're off to a lightning fast start in game three. Moe's birds on turn one into a meddling mage. David on turn two is playing out a sky diamond and let's see what meddling mage named on his turn two. Tinker. All right, not getting got by that again. And I'm just gonna paradise going back to hand. That card is actually pretty good in a deck running a lot of mandorks and winter orbs. Assuming those Mandorks can stay on the field. Speaking of Winter Orb, <laughs> there it is. David is all tapped out, so only one of those islands is to untap this turn. And Moses Undiscovered Paradise will return to hand next turn. Which obviously isn't super great right now, but if he had a second land out, it would have been a lot better. The deck, again, doesn't really need much mana to function. Probably two lands. Three at most, I guess, to get out your gator. Alright, there's a Thornscape Apprentice. And the Metal Mage is actually just doing an admiral job of beating face, having already dealt four damage. There's a Thran Processor. Or Thran Dynamo, sorry. A little bit of mana, acceleration. David does have... Oh, okay, there's a propaganda. He does have the uh, the Altar Dementia. So one of two combo pieces named. Sago. He does have a Lotus Petal too. Is there much he can do with one mana right now? I don't think so. No, just gonna pass. All right, that propaganda will prove to be a problem. Yes, it was not tapped last turn. The bird played out the Thornscape Apprentice, however, it will be tapped this turn. Bounced for the Trevor Runes. And there is another gator. Say go, can't pay for the propaganda. Just a reminder that Winter Orb is a thing. <laughs> uh, you only get one land. David, I think, deciding what that one land is going to be. Do you need the island, or do you need a little bit more mana acceleration? Propaganda in this mud style deck is actually very smart. I really like that. I'm really hoping we get the uh, the full deck list before this video goes out for you guys, and also just for my own curiosity. I have been playing with a mono red mud style deck that's more aggressive using those one and two drops that care about your opponent having all tap lands. All right, looks like David is gonna untap an island and then move to draw step. And he's gonna wasteland. Oh, this is Trevor Runes. And then play out 
A Phyrexian processor. Heaven four like that. Cannot make a creature this time. But maybe next time. It's gonna pay five, no, six life. Okay. But Well, no, I guess because of the uh Hmm. Okay. Alright, City of Brass coming down. Yeah, let's the negator attack in. This is what I was stumbling over saying. <laughs> the propaganda preventing David from dying this turn, but he is going to need an answer. Did he draw it? A 6 drop is not going to do it. It can just get tapped down with the Thornscape Apprentice. Does he have one of those um, seal of renewal or whatever it is, the bounce ones? No, it looks like he's digging. He's going to sack the Mind Stone. I think he drew a Tinker, which unfortunately is named by the Meddling Mage. Does he have an out here? I think that's what he's trying to figure out too. That Thornscape Apprentice really proven its metal in uh, both games one and games three. All right, there's a frantic search. Frantically digging for more answers. Oh, well, no, there's a seal. Okay, is that enough to do it? Yeah, you have the seal as a... Uh... Or sorry, no, this is a fact perfection, not a frantic search. No, David's just dead here, right? Unless he has another land to play? Oh, he has the Lotus Petal. All right. He is barely alive. And there's an Undiscovered Paradise. There's another gator in uh, Moses' hand. He could just wait a turn and do the same thing, right? I think that's what you do, right? You, your opponent can't activate the uh, processor twice by the time it's your next turn. You still get to tap down their creature. Yes, they bounce one, but they can't bounce both. Oh, but then you can't really pay. Well, you'd have to draw another land, I guess. No, you have to draw another mana source. Oh, this is making my brain hurt a little, guys. <laughs> And Bo's trying to decide what the best option is here, too. I think... I think you just still play out the gator. There's an engineered plague. I think we're getting a quick uh, oracle check of what the Frexian processor creature type is. Let's see, it makes a Frexian minion. So, Moe doesn't want to name Phyrexian, but you could name Minion. I believe the Negator is just still a Phyrexian Horror. Or are we trying to name the Phyrexian Processor? 
or uh, not for, uh, devour. Sorry. That is a Phyrexian construct. Okay, so probably naming construct then, I'd have to assume. Trying to not get blown out by the combo. That is pretty smart to uh, throw that in from the sideboard. Hopefully we'll get a little uh, piece of paper seeing what he named. And yeah, I believe with the Engineer Plague, it doesn't give David a chance to respond to it. It just dies to state-based effects. Interesting, Phyrexian being named. It does hit both the uh, the processor and the devourer, but at the same time, it makes your negator smaller. It's still obviously big enough for lethal, but that is a very interesting call. I wonder if there's something to be said for swinging in with, uh, say, the meddling mage. I mean, it does open you up to just being comboed out next turn if it gets bounced. But you could pay two for that, put your opponent on one. If you drew a land, assuming you tap down the birds in the city, you could then swing with two creatures for lethal. Alright, there's a powder keg. Nice shiny powder keg, actually. Foil, nice. Okay, we're doing two to naturalize, and I think that's actually just going to be game. That is... Brutal and Mose takes it down in three. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. That was a great series. Got to see the combo deck do its thing. Got to see the Negator deck beat down with the Gators. It really had it all. If you made it this far, make sure to like and subscribe. It really does help the channel. And if you want to support the channel even more, there's a Patreon link in the video description below. That money goes towards gear upgrades, travel expenses, and just making more pre modern videos. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time.